All right, let's take a look at what Michael Saylor talked about at the Bitcoin 2024 keynote speech he did a few weeks ago. Dangerous to me. They call it micro strategy. I call it dangerous strategy. Round of applause for that. All right, we're going to take a look at this because I personally think this is a dangerous strategy to first institute, secondly, promote, in my opinion. Very very irresponsible and it'll get a lot of people messed up i'm gonna explain why i feel this way but let's go ahead and take a look at this clip from michael saylor at the bitcoin 2024 bitcoin conference all right let's what go what shouldn't you do don't quit your day job don't lose your focus on bitcoin don't use margin loans and trade with leverage you get wiped out while you're asleep on a saturday night that's not good I good 30-year loan for three percent backed by the government on your land bad Wait a minute. Who can get 3% loan? First of all, somebody help me out in the comments. Let me know if you can get a 3% 30-year loan anywhere. Uh, come on, man. We're not uh, white privilege like yourself there, Michael Saylor. Nobody can get that except you. All right, round of applause for that. Let's go. Overnight 10x leverage. So what's a typical person? Well, we actually model an individual, and we said, what if you had 750000 in net assets? And you made 200 grand a year and you're going to make 5% more every year and you got a savings rate of 25% and you can invest 50,000 a year. 5% more every year? Well, there's a lot of strategies. You could be the normie and do a normal strategy, diversified portfolio. You can be a 10%er and you can put 10% of your assets into Bitcoin. You can be a BTC maxi and put 80% of your assets and put 80% of your earnings into Bitcoin. You could be a double maxi. And that's when you basically take an extra $250,000 loan against the house. Oh. And then the triple maxi is you finance the house for Bitcoin, you buy Bitcoin, you flip all your assets to Bitcoin, and then you oh move to a cheap God. tax jurisdiction where you actually can avoid some taxes and invest an extra 50 grand in Bitcoin, maybe a Singapore or UAE or something. Horrible, horrible, horrible the result? advice. Well, this is the result. The normie ends up with $8 million in 21 years. The, BT, the 10 percenter will more than double that. The maxi ends up with 100 million. The double maxi, 150. The triple maxi, 214 million. You can see the power of leverage and the choice is <laughs> uh -oh. yours. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Stop the music. Ladies and gentlemen, this is dangerous rhetoric right here. I'm going to explain why. Okay, first of all, Bitcoin, and I'm an OG Bitcoin guy, okay? Sailor just found out about it yesterday. I totally understand the concept of what Bitcoin was, is, and no one really knows fully what Bitcoin will be in the future, but I think we have a pretty good understanding at this point in its development where Bitcoin is going to be in the future. It's definitely not where it started out, okay? Definitely, that's a whole nother conversation, but it's definitely not where it started out. However, Bitcoin is not a productive asset. It is dangerous to think in the projections and numbers he used. I can just start off with 5% growth in your income every year is ridiculous. That makes no sense uh, for the average person and even above average. I don't know how many people can, can consistently do 5% annually growth in their revenue or in, in their income. I don't know. Maybe I'm just uh, pessimistic on that one. But you guys help me out in the comments and let me know. Secondly, back to my first point, Bitcoin is not a productive asset. What does that mean? It means just like a home, your home that you live in uh, is not an investment. Bitcoin, a lot better than a home in regards to there's no capital expenditures. There's no uh, cost in holding Bitcoin. If you hold it yourself, you self custody, there's no capital expenditures on that Bitcoin. Gold, there is can be no capital expenditures on that as well but if you hold enough of it then there is okay there there's a lot of cost for holding a lot of gold so that's out the window a home we already know you know taxes roofs repairs this and that forever so there's no comparison there however when you compare stocks and i know i'm gonna get a lot of flack for this but i just got to give it to you real and i'm a crypto channel crypto guy been through and through uh for a very long time over 10 to 10 years a decade plus 11 years in this game 
So I understand. But at least with stocks, you have a yield. There's some intrinsic value, some debate on if those values are appropriate or precise in this day and age. Okay, possibly not. But at least you're buying something. You're buying a, a share of a company that has revenue. Okay, that actually produces something, uh, adds to the GDP. There's some productivity out of holding a basket of of stocks. You're telling me that you want me to, and and you want us to believe, Michael Saylor, that going with the normie, quote unquote, normie route is going to be the worst decision for you. As you guys saw on the screen, normie route, you have 10 million in 20 years. You go with the triple maxi route, you have $200 million. Round of applause for that nonsense. It's just no way, to, it's no way to know. It's too early of a, a new asset class to even say something like that. We don't know where the future will go with this asset class. You don't want to go all in on a non-productive asset. Uh, you're just, it's too risky. It's too risky. You definitely don't want to do that, in my opinion, not giving you financial advice. You got to figure out the best route for you is. But you definitely want to have some stocks because stocks tend to uh, at least, you know, it's not a greatest fool theory or less of a greatest fool theory playing out with your retirement, with your life savings, as it is with Bitcoin, as it is with um, many other assets, even homes to a certain extent. Uh, suffer from the greater fool's theory um but you know i'm just not really liking what i'm hearing from sailor and him suggesting and you can also what to see, do. let's take a look you know it takes 15.9 bitcoin to be a triple maxi you know 6.25 bitcoin will make you a wealthy person let's talk about corporations don't dilute your shareholders with risky overpriced m a activity wait so you're telling me that bitcoin isn't risky behavior <laughs> is as risky as anything else it is the most risky asset volatility wise yes over time we we think and we theorize that it will smooth out but you can't say you can't say that it's just ridiculous here's our typical corporation 100 million dollars of cash flow a billion dollars of enterprise value it's growing it's generating a lot of cash flow its share price is 100 bucks and now the issue is what's your strategy normie maxi double maxi triple maxi well, the normie's going to be okay. You'll, make, you'll be a, have a $1,200 stock price, but just 10% allocation doubles it. The maxi is going to nearly 8x it. The double maxi is $17,000 stock. The triple maxi is $28,000. What kind of company do you want to run? Reality check. This is a triple maxi strategy at work right now. This is micro strategy. It will be 48 months on August 10th of this year since we started down this road. 48 months. And uh, not a long time, by the way. Know, just, running... just, not a long time. The track record is very, very short, my friend. I'm just round of applause to that. Very short. So I don't know what. A company, and there's 300 million companies out there. If you're running a company and you think you can do what Microsoft and Apple and Google do, then good for you, you can get to a 20 to 25% ARR. If you want to copy NVIDIA, you will beat everybody. And the sure. irony is, it's easy to copy MicroStrategy. I just gave you the playbook. It's simple. Yeah, so guys, let me know your thoughts about this. Um, I personally think this is dangerous rhetoric coming from Michael Saylor. I think CEOs aren't listening to this. They know better. You can't go all in on Bitcoin and leverage everything for a non-productive asset as such that MicroStrategy is doing. I think it will end badly. And I'll eat my words in five years if I'm wrong. Because here's the thing. If they have the stomach to weather a crazy downturn and not get margin called or any in their loans or anything, I know they have low interest loans on this Bitcoin. That's cool. But because Michael Saylor has not been in the game of crypto for that long, I don't care how many books you read or charts you look at to see where Bitcoin dropped and then came back up. When you're in it, it's a different thing. 
And I'm curious, and you guys let me know, I'm curious to see how Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy, how they behave in the next pullback with Bitcoin because they happen and they happen violently. And I think we will get another one before we get a next uh, another run up. Right. So I just want to see if they're able to hold through it, then kudos to them. The strategy will work. Uh, but when you have debt on the line, there's some stipulations. You're kind of restricted a little bit. If it's free ca cash flow that you're putting into this is different, even though I don't think uh, as a shareholder, I'm looking for Michael strategy to put all their money into Bitcoin. I want them to actually put money back into their company and uh, make more revenue. Again, Bitcoin cannot yield you any revenue. That's my problem with his strategy on the corporate side, on the personal side, even worse. Don't take this strategy. Don't put all your money in Bitcoin. Diversify within the crypto space. You should be in all types of coins. And, and then on top of that, you definitely want to have some stocks in there. I'm just sorry. You're going to have some stocks because over time, we have a longer track record over 200 years or 150 years or so of, uh, of track record of knowing that uh, holding stocks over time typically not typically, 100% of the time, was two times. There's been two times in history where if you bought on these two dates, you would be have been wrecked. But other than that, have a diversified portfolio, stocks, crypto, a little, you know, real estate, of course. I'm not a huge bond fan, but you can't just be all in Bitcoin. It's going to wreck you, in my opinion, because it's too early to know. Yes, it's outperformed every other asset class, but will that continue? I look at Bitcoin as for, from the, the tech perspective, the utility is awesome. And some say that utility will translate into millions and millions of dollars of, of price per Bitcoin. That's only speculation. We don't know. This experiment has been going on for 13 years or whatever. Michael Strategy has been doing this for 48 months. Not enough time period here to really make such bold statements, Mr. Michael Saylor. Let me know your comments in the section below. I would love to know. And if you like these type of reactionary videos, let me know as well. I'll do more of those. That's it, man. Like, share, and subscribe. That's my two Satoshis. I'm out of here, people. Holla. Uh, yo, it's Crypto Blood. Detroit Flow. Screaming from the D. Knowing what to show. Indicators are wrong point. OG since 12. Investing in trade. Living life.